Ah, uh, yes, we are finally reviewing one of my favorite games of all time. Hello, my name is Pastel Sparkles. I am a streamer on Twitch and I love Fire Emblem Three Houses. I've been a really big fan of the Fire Emblem series for a really long time. Never before has there been a game so filled with so much story and so much thirst for almost every single character that your character can interact with. Ah! If you haven't played Fire Emblem or Fire Emblem Three Houses, it is largely a strategy game where you fight kind of in a similar style to chess where you move characters on a playing field and they take turns each, kind of um, Final Fantasy style. And one very cool element to it is that when you fight, you can fall in love. And well, nothing quite says be gay, do crime, quite like Fire Emblem Three Houses. I think everyone saw this coming. Everyone saw me doing Fire Emblem. I, Fire Emblem is a huge part of my brand. One thing that you can expect on my streams when you subscribe for the first time is you get a thank you scene from me that goes a little something like this. What is that? That's a subscription to Pastel Sparkles. It would be very embarrassing if I had the wrong idea, so I have to ask. Are you subbing? here now to, to me now that i've played every single one of the routes i think it felt right to finally talk about this game and talk about why i love it so much and talk about how thirsty it is because that is a huge part of why i love it so much fire emblem three houses is the 16th game in the fire emblem series and there are 39 romanceable characters in this game including the dlc I'm pretty sure that's right. Everywhere I've looked and counted, it's been different, but I'm pretty sure 39 is the amount. So 39 question mark. What's very cool about this game is that not only do you have potentially 39-ish characters to romance, no matter whether you are a male or female main character, you have the opportunity to romance characters of the same gender as you. Very cool stuff for Fire Emblem. I'm not sure if they've done that in a game before because I don't think I was quite so tied to my bisexuality as I have been at any other point in time. So I'm not sure that I was really caring so much about that as I am now. The main story of this game, I'm jumping everywhere because I'm just very excited. The main story follows a character, Byleth, either male or female, who is the child of a mercenary who is very well known within Fodlan. You pretty much don't know your own past, life, anything about you you don't even know how old you are which is a huge plot hole in the game that frustrates me to this day because even though i've played it all and i know pretty much all of the lore that's about this game i still don't know that fact did i miss it can anyone fill me in on when you find out anything about byleth or why she doesn't know anything hey you travel to garrick mark monastery after helping the heads of three houses in a battle before the main game starts. Once you get to the school or monastery, you are asked to become one of the teachers of one of the three houses and you can pick between the Black Eagles, which represents the Empire in Fodlan, the Blue Lions, which represents the Kingdom of Fodlan, and the Golden Deers, which represents the Alliance of Fodlan. They each have certain characters that only exist within those houses and some of them can be recruited depending on their association with the head of the house and things like that so if you play blue lions for example you can romance people outside of your house if you recruit them into your house so that was probably a very terrible explanation of the game but i think that's probably enough to get you to have kind of understanding of where we're starting so Let's get started into what's actually thirsty about this game. After you've picked your house, uh, I'm gonna talk about this from a blue lion standpoint because that was the first house that I played. You have class with them every week and then you go on certain battles within the week that you get to pick 
and then you have the weekend to boost stats and boost relationships and things like that at the end of the month you have a main battle that you're working toward and then you progress through the story so to do well in the battles you want to have a good support ranking with each of the characters when you've got a better support network within your classmates you end up having different kinds of bonuses that you can have during battles which is very cool but another aspect of boosting their support is that you get to know the characters better and form a deeper connection with them and see why certain characters don't like each other or actually like each other or it's all very deep and very confusing and very overwhelming in general but i love it and i've spent a lot of time getting to know this story so say you are in the blue lion's house and oh Sylvain has caught your attention. Ah, a redhead. Beautiful. That really checks every one of my boxes for romance. Now what? Uh, so there are five main ways that you can romance someone in this game. That is putting your character next to that character more often than not in a game. And when they fight someone and finish the fight, a little love heart comes over their head, which says that they have bonded closer. You can give them gifts go to lunch with them, go to the sauna with them, which is new in the DLC. You can also have tea time with them, which is a very intimate time. It's a quick time event, which is a little bit stressful, but it's okay. Once you start getting to know them, the tea time is quite easy because you kind of know what conversations you want to have with them. You can also study uh, with them, making sure that they have their stats boosted more because it gives you a closer connection to them. And you can also learn from them later in the game. So they're the main kind of ways that you can boost your stats with them. You can also boost your stats with them in uh, actual story conversation, depending on what answers you say, but they're kind of a lesser connection ability. So they're the main ways that you romance. And with 39 characters, you have quite a lot to choose from. There are some that you need to romance earlier in the game so that you can actually acquire them later in the game. And there are some that are completely banned to you depending on which house you start with. So you're not able to romance any of the heads of house that aren't your class. So if you are in the Blue Lions, you can't romance Edelgard or Claude. You also can't romance their retainers. So for Edelgard, that is Hubert. For Dimitri, that is Dadu. And for Golden Deers, that is Hilda. So if you plan on dating either the head of house or their retainer, make sure that you pick the house from the start that has those people in it. Very confusing, I know. You can also romance some of the teachers. And what's funny about that is you're kind of at the same age level as the students. So the students kind of range from 16 or so to 21 in the beginning of the game. And you're about 21. So some of the teachers are maybe in their 30s and 40s. So it kind of feels like there's a bit of an age imbalance, but you can kind of yeah, you can kind of get past it. It's legal. That's not really a good enough excuse, is it? For some people, it feels okay. For some people, it feels weird. Some of these people worked with your father, so it's at that kind of age. It's up to you whether you kind of feel like that's okay morally. But anyway, now that I have played all four routes of this game, I have my favorites, I have my thoughts on what are the, the best romances. I also have thoughts on my least favorites and I'm gonna start with them because I feel like they might be more problematic than the favorites. And I wanna get them out of the way first so that if you have angry thoughts about them, you can leave the video early. So I don't really have very many for least favorites. I, more often than not, I just didn't bond with a character through my playthrough. It kind of becomes, um, if you don't really, form a bond with a character straight away when you're on your fourth or third or fourth playthrough of the game. You kind of don't care about actually getting to know them through the support stories. You know, some people I just missed out on, but in my least favorites, I have included people that I either cared about or just actively disliked because it made more sense to me to add. So I'm going to go from, from least 
disliked to most disliked in the least favorites. You with me? <laughs> so I'm going to start this one off with Catherine. She is a knight. She's really Rhea's biggest fan. I'm um, actually two of the people that are in this least favorite category are Rhea stands, and that's pretty much the only reason why I don't like them. So uh, Catherine, I find her support pathway to be underwhelming. I feel like you're never gonna be the best in in that scenario. And Cyril, kind of a similar story. Cyril also feels too young to be romanced. Like at the beginning of the game, he is the youngest character. And even after the time skip, it kind of just feels like you've groomed him. So I just kind of hate that, to be honest. And so I never, ever recommend Cyril. I also just think that his S support is so underwhelming. You literally feel like his mum the whole time, or at least I did. But my, my least favorite overall cuts me the deepest and I feel like it's gonna cut a lot of people the deepest. So I say this knowing that it hurts me to say this too. So I'm with you all on my opinion. But my least favorite uh, character support is Felix, who is from the Blue Lion's house. Felix was one of my favorite characters to romance. There's something about him hating you and then softening over time that I really enjoyed. I love a challenge in a dating game. Those are some of the funnest to play usually. But with him, I found his S support to be completely underwhelming after all this time wooing him. I had, during my Blue Lions playthrough, four characters that I couldn't pick between because I loved them all so much. And I'm so glad that I never went with Felix because I would have felt so ripped off if I had picked him. I also think that Felix and Sylvain should be together forever. Their romance story after the game is one of my favorites. So let's just say I'm glad I never picked either of them because they got to be together and in love, yay. <laughs> So I guess now you've heard my, my least favorites, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about my favorites. My favorite romances for Fire Emblem Three Houses are Dorothea, Mercedes, Dimitri, Ferdinand, Ignatz, and Seteth. Now, I just got chills. <laughs> I just got chills talking about Seteth. Uh, so I'm gonna start there. That one was the, the one that I saw most recently when I played the church route uh, of the Black Eagles. That was the romance pathway I went through. I wanted to romance him since Blue Lions, and I'm glad that I finally got there and I finally achieved greatness in romancing who we've lovingly called Broccoli Daddy. <laughs> Seteth is one of the kind of teacher role characters that you can romance. He is Rhea's advisor. So Seteth is one of the kind of most important characters in the game as far as the lore of Fodlan goes. But I just think that he's uh, lovely. Um, he helps you kind of get to know who you are because you don't really know who you are. He's fascinated by you. He wants to learn about you. And in learning about you, he reveals a lot about himself, which is very beautiful. And I think it's just kind of a good fit based on who Byleth is. Uh, to the story. Ignatz and Ferdinand were two that I was tossing up. Uh, actually, Ignatz was not even on my radar until I went through and watched all the S supports of the characters that I never planned on doing S supports with. Ignatz is part of the Golden Deer's house and Ferdinand is part of the Black Eagle's house. Ferdinand surprised me and so did Ignatz. I knew Ignatz was a baby, but like a baby in a he's soft kind of way, not a baby as in they're a child kind of way. Ignatz is just a wholesome little bean. He just wants to be a painter and he wants to be epic and just let him be epic, you know? The way that he talks to Byleth, is just so adorable and I love him. Ferdinand became one of my most favorites because of an A support with Dorothea. I, it wasn't even with Byleth that I fell in love with him. So in, in my Black Eagles playthrough, I just put Ferdinand and Dorothea together because I think that they're a match made in heaven. But I, I find him to be absolutely captivating. Ferdinand comes from a noble house and struggles with being worthy of his position. And Dorothea comes from nothing. 
Dorothea was living on the streets and she was singing and got discovered and became part of the opera. And when she was in the opera, people started caring about her. So she kind of hates the nobility because they didn't care about her when she wasn't one of them. So Ferdinand and Dorothea's history is tied together. Dorothea hates Ferdinand kind of in the beginning because when they were children and she got discovered, he was kind of there when she got discovered. She was singing at a fountain and he saw her and then he just stared at her and she thought that he hated her but he was so enamored by her that he didn't know what to do so he ran away <laughs> which is so cute oh i cry he's such an angel he just loves very deeply and like yes he's full of himself but like if you were him wouldn't you be <laughs> So I love them, they're my new loves because I saw them more recently, but Dorothea, Mercedes and Dimitri were my loves from the beginning, from when I first played the game. Dimitri has such an interesting story for the whole game. He is so tortured and he is so tortured in a way that manifests so badly in the second part of the game that you really don't think you're ever going to kind of get him back to kind of what he was before, but like in a way that he's happy, kind of. And then once you get to the S support, it's just the most beautiful thing and it's satisfying and I just love it and I can't recommend his pathway enough. There's nothing bad about romancing him at all. I think he's particularly special to me because when you love someone that suffers so much from depression and things like that, it can feel like you are constantly trying to pull someone out of the abyss and with him you're doing that and then it's successful and i know that you can't really say that for a lot of things in real life like he still certainly has problems i'm sure but it kind of feels like you've you've been able to help them in a way with their mental health that they can now live a better life because they know that they have support with them and so that's what you kind of get from dimitri so that's why it's particularly special to me because it kind of emulates a bit of real life for me. Mercedes is my most favorite of all of the romance pathways. Mercedes was my favorite character from the beginning. She is everything I wish I could be. She has an incredibly interesting story. I think that she is an incredibly powerful character. She's sweet and lovely and she's always caring about others and I just think it's so nice. Like she had a pretty terrible upbringing and now she just wants to give back to everyone who helped her and that's just ah! <laughs> and her, just the way that she talks to you and their support is so cute i die ah! <laughs> so yeah they're all the people that i would recommend i love them and i just want good things for them <laughs> i want to say there is only one romance pathway that I don't know the end of, and that is Hubert's from The Black Eagles. And that is because I have a video that is gonna be coming out later this week that has taken me six months to film, which is my me romancing Hubert Fire Emblem so you don't have to. So I don't actually know his ending, so I don't know if it's worth attempting or not. As I said, I started the Blue Lions playthrough and through that playthrough, I fucking hated him. And right now I've played two Black Eagles playthroughs. So my opinion may be changing, question mark, or it might not. We'll see uh, at the end of that video. So I can't speak on him. He's not in my favorites or least favorites because I just don't know. So after my ranting of my favorite characters, my least favorite characters and where I'm at with the game, what are my final thoughts about how thirsty this game is? This game has completely taken over my entire life. Every single line of dialogue in this game is voiced, which is so crazy 
that they spent so much time on voicing for a game like this that never happens and it just shows you how much they believed in this game and it was so worth it because you really get to know the characters and you really get to experience them in a way you might not have if you just had your little brain voice going on you know this game is by far one of the thirstiest games i have ever played and not for anything like fan servicey like there's certainly fan service but more so for emulating real relationships question mark this game is certainly less of the sexiness or whateverness it's definitely more of a romance kind of game and like traditionally romance kind of game so that's something to consider before going into this game for sure something to be aware of is if you dive in you won't be able to get back out you're a fire emblem stand for life so <sighs> What could I rate this game on a scale of 1 to 10 uh, thirsts? Listen. I have to give this game infinite thirst out of 10. Which is not something I'm planning on doing for any game, really. This game just really ticked all the boxes for me in terms of ability to fall in love with people ability to feel connection with people it was just they've done it so well the the community building of the game i i can't speak highly enough of it if you haven't played the game already please consider playing the story is so interesting and from the different perspectives of the houses, you get to see why certain people act in a certain way. Although for the most part, the beginning of the story is more or less the same. The, uh, the kind of after war part is the bit that changes the most. But yeah, I, I can't recommend this game enough. If you haven't played it, please pick it up. Cindered Shadows, the Ashen Wolves addition to this game was very interesting. And it gives you kind of more story to Byleth's backstory and talks about some of the holes of that kind of plotline, which I very much enjoyed now that I have played it. Oh my god, this is this is by far the longest of the thirst reviews uh, recordings that I'm probably gonna do because my mind is just so everywhere about this game. Like I just want to talk about one thing and then another thing and then I just word vomit everywhere and I don't know what to do with myself. Later this week, I'm planning on putting up my full playthrough of my Hubert Fire Emblem Romance Pathway. Can we get some fingers crossed for me? Because I don't know if I'm going to make it. I am right near the end, so it's it's a matter of time before I, I get it all up and ready for you guys. So I hope that you enjoy that when that eventually comes out. If you've played this game, what was your favorite house? Who was your favorite romance? And who do you despise the most? Is it Rhea? I understand if it is. I also don't fucking understand anyone who romances Rhea. That is something that I should have spoken about earlier, but I'm leaving it until the end so no one can hate me. Bye!